Okay, so in this video we're going to look at some complex analysis. I'm going to find the residues of this function here, 1 over z cubed plus 1. So, looking for the residues, what we want is we want to find this denominator here to be equal to 0. So we're looking for the singularities. So the first thing we need to do is solve that. So, z cubed plus 1 equals 0. So then that will give us z cubed equals minus 1. So let's just draw that on a graph and see what we get. So, so if z cubed equals minus 1, we can see straight away that minus 1 cubed is also minus 1. So we know that minus 1 is a solution. So that's our real axis and that's our imaginary axis. Okay, so now we need another two solutions for this, because as it's cubed, there's going to be two more. So one is z equals minus 1. That's one solution. So how can we also say z equals minus 1? Well, using Euler's identity, we can say z equals e to the minus pi i. Okay, so that said it was e to the minus i pi, but we need two more solutions for this one. So what we can do, if we take the cube root of this, we get this. So we just basically divide by 3, e to the minus pi i over 3. And we'll also get the positive as well, equals e to the plus pi i over 3. So therefore, then we found our three singularities. We've got one at minus one, at minus pi i over three, which would be, sorry, the minus pi i of three would be here. So e to the minus pi i over three, that'd be somewhere here. Actually more, more here, won't it? Okay, so that's that one. And then another one around here, that's e to the i pi over three. Okay. So we've located our three singularities, so that's going to be at here. So now what we need to do is to evaluate the residues at those singularities. Now we've got a bit of a problem at the moment because we've got z cubed plus 1 in the denominator. But what we can see is that z cubed plus 1 equals 0 at these three points. So we can use something called the differentiation rule or the g over h rule. So G over H rule. So basically what we do is we now specify a G and an H function for the numerator and denominator. So G of Z will equal just one. And H of Z, let's make that like a proper Z. Z equals Z cubed plus one. To use this rule, first of all, we need to know that h of z equals 0. So h of e to the minus pi i equals 0. So that's okay. So that's one of the uh, rules uh, taken care of. And also for all of these, we'll also equal the 0 as well. So the next thing we do is, because it's called the differentiation rule, we take the derivative of g. Uh, sorry, of h, sorry, of h. So the derivative of that, let's just call that h prime of z, that will equal 3z squared. So if we're going to plug in this value here, or 3z squared, we can't get 0 now, it must be not 0. Well, as one of the solutions is minus 1, so h prime of minus 1, that equals... 3 times minus 1 squared, so that equals 3. So that also is another condition taken care of. So now we're free now to go in now and do the calculation of the residues. So now what we do is we have this function now, g over h prime of z, g over z, that now equals 1 over 3 z squared. 
So when we're calculating the residues, we're going to use this function here. That's what we're interested in now. So what we're writing here now is the residue of this function here. So we'll call this function f. So we'll let, let's write that here, f equals 1 over z cubed plus 1. Because that's the residues of the function we're looking for, not this one. This is an aid to help us find the residues. So the residues of f at, so I go along here with the three residues. So this one here we know is minus 1. Let's start with that one first. That's the easiest. So that'd be 1 over 3z squared. So that's 1 over 3 times minus 1 squared, which we calculated here is 3, so that equals 1 over 3. Okay, next one. So now we're on the residue of f at minus pi i over 3. So that's 1 over, right, 3z squared. So we need 3 times e to the minus pi i over 3. But we also want this term squared. So what we can do is now we can multiply this by 2. So if I just write squared for now, then that will equal 1 over, the 3 will stay. Now using the rules for exponentials here and indices together, minus pi over 3 squared will just become minus 2 pi i over 3. So e to the minus 2 pi i over 3. Okay, so that takes care of that residue. Now for the last one, residue of f at pi i over 3. So again, using our formula, we've got 1 over 3 times uh, e to the pi i over 3. And this, again, is squared. So 3z squared, that's our z book number we're using. So now it's going to be similar to this one, except it will be the conjugate. So that's 1 over 3e to the 2 pi i over 3. Okay, now this one, that's okay. We'll leave that as it is. These ones here, these are all in polar form. But let's just have a look, see what we get for these in Cartesian form. This one is already straight away in Cartesian form, it's got no imaginary value. But let's just have a look at this one. So let's just cross this out here. Let's see if we can work out the Cartesian value of this. So 1 over 3 e to the minus 2 pi over 3. Okay, that's the same as saying one third e to the two pi i over three. So flip this negative to the top, get rid of the negative, becomes a positive. So using Euler's identity, or Euler's formula even, that then becomes cosine of two pi over three plus i sine two pi over three, which equals one third. Okay. Cosine of 2 pi over 3, that's going to be minus 1 half. And then sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Okay, now distribute the third. That becomes minus 1 over 6 plus i root 3 over 6. So that takes care of that one. So now let's just calculate this one. We'll come over here onto this board. So we've got 1 over 3 divided by e to the 2 pi i over 3. Oh, get rid of that 3 there. Okay, so this is the same as 1 third e to the minus 2 pi i over 3. So again, using Euler's formula like we did here. That's one third cosine of minus two pi over three plus i sine minus two pi over three. 
got a k. Cosine of minus 2 pi over 3. Again, that one is minus 1 half. So we've got leave the 1 third in there. So equals 1 third minus 1 half. And this time we need sine of minus 2 pi over 3. So that's going to be the conjugate of this one. So that's minus i root 3 over 2. So sorry, 1 half, sorry. 1 half. Got one. So I keep typing 1 third. So 1 half. So 1 third times minus 1 half. Minus 1 over 6. 1 third times minus root 3 over 2. That's minus i root 3 over 6. Okay. So these are our answers in Cartesian form. Okay. So click on the link below as well. And I'll show you how to integrate this function using complex analysis. Okay.